Hey, what's happening guys? Nick with Classic Nation. Welcome back to another episode today. I'm super excited. Today, I am going to be doing the install of the Ride Tech suspension kit for my 65 Impala. Stay tuned. Before I get my hands dirty and get into the actual install job, I wanted to walk you guys through this kit. This kit has a ton of stuff, came from Ride Tech. Um, obviously, Ride Tech does suspensions. They do a ton of other stuff for cars, both air ride, coilovers. Uh, but I can't tell you how happy I am to have received these parts in the kit, and I'll tell you why. First off, uh, upper control arms for the front. Every one of these parts are just dialed in. The welds look perfect. The powder coating is literally flawless. Um, I, I like the fact that it's all made in the USA, which is pretty cool, but it includes all of the hardware. And I've purchased a ton of aftermarket parts for my car before. They almost always, especially the Chinese stuff, comes in a box with no instructions, no hardware. This kit, every single box had an instruction sheet, which goes a long way. I think I know what I'm doing, but again, I'll probably be referring to the instructions, which I appreciate. The kit for my car consists of the upper control arms for the front. We've also got the front uh, sway bar, they call it their muscle bar, right there. Again, everything comes with instructions, uh, every single box. We've also, in the rear, we've got our pan hard rod. Um, they've got their, what they call their R joint bushing, which is pretty cool. It swivels uh, multiple different ways. It's kind of like a heim joint, but it's their R joint. They've got their nice little logo on that. And they use that so that the flex can be, uh, rather there could be no bind in the suspension. Makes it really nice. We've got the rear muscle bar, pretty cool. Again, all the hardware for it here. For my car, it comes with rear trailing arms. These are the lower control arms. This also has the integrated coilover mount. I'll show you one thing I like about this kit once I'm done here. Here's the mounts, everything power coated. They've even got their nice logo engraved in the upper shock support. Pretty cool. Um, again, here's the upper, since my car came with a factory four link, like some 65s did, I need two upper bars. So I've got my two upper bars. Both of them have the R joint on one side to allow bind free uh, suspension movement. We've got my rear coilovers. Again, just super dialed in. Springs look fantastic. Just the fit and finish on the products, even before putting them in the car, um, make me want to never buy any other suspension from any other brand again. And I'm used to cheap Chinese knockoffs on stuff, so it's nice to be able to get some quality stuff. So there's my front springs. Uh, coilovers rather, here's the rear coilovers, or sorry, vice versa, rear, here's the fronts. It came with everything, all the hardware, all the bushings, grade eight, made in America stuff, that, that kind of means a lot. Um, and then last but not least over here, we've got the front lower control arms. Um, these have an integrated strut rod, so in my car you get rid of the strut rod, that bolts through the frame, you get your alignment stuff there. Just super quality parts, forged, um, Ball joint, <laughs> there you go. Forged ball joints already installed on these arms. It's just super cool, really nice products. One of the big things as I was looking for an upgraded suspension that I started to consider was I had a mismatch of parts. I had you know sway bars from ADCO and different companies and I had Chinese control arms and I had you know Viking, which are good, coilovers. And I had a mix match of parts. And one of the weaknesses, as is called out by Evan, is that the lower control arms, which are super important because that's where the weight of the car is carried, I had the cheap Chinese knockoff control arms. And, and it didn't make sense to upgrade everything else on the car and leave you know, the safety and reliability of the whole car riding on these Chinese parts. And so I just said, let's get rid of that. Let's, and no, no offense to anybody who does have those because I rode those for a really long time. But, and honestly, they, they worked fine, they worked well, but it's nice to be in a position to get a better system that's complete, that's cohesive, that was designed together. Like there's no thinking about the size of the rear bar and the front and the bias. and this, It's all figured out. Ride Tech's done the job putting it together. Um, and again, made in America is kind of a big deal, which I appreciate. The second big thing with this system, besides being a full car system, complete, figured out, um, is one specific thing in the rear. Now, there's only two companies for my particular car that have full car kits, and that's QA1 and that's Ride Tech that I know of. Maybe there's more. If there is, let me know in the comments. But of those two systems, the reason that I went with Ride Tech is the rear suspension is set up that the coilovers, the mounting point for the coilovers, utilizes the stock spring location. Now, the QA1 kit for this car 
relocates those rear coilovers and puts them basically where the original shocks mounted. Well, the shocks were never carrying the weight of the body in this original design. And though there is like a stamped steel brace back there, I didn't like the idea that the entire weight of the car now is riding in a, in a spot on the body that it wasn't designed to ride in. Now, sure, it's probably strong enough and it probably could be strengthened and added additional plates to, but the thing that I liked about Ride Tech is they used an area of the car that was already designed to carry the load. They've integrated it with their lower control arm. To me, that's just a better package. I mean, the engineering might show that it, it works out just fine on the QA1 kit, but that was the reason that I went with the Ride Tech. And again, having unboxed all of these parts, I'm really happy that I did. Super excited to get these parts in the car. We're gonna walk you along in the process. Uh, time for me to get my hands dirty. Let's get into it. Okay, the first thing that you're going to want to do is get the car lifted up and secured. Uh, you can see here I've got the Ride Tech plate. That is going to go up where the old spring used to be. So obviously pull the old springs out uh, and then secure the plate. Comes with a couple of new bolts, some new fasteners, but that plate basically just mounts to that upper part in the body uh, where the old coil spring was so that you could put those plates and that's going to serve as your top coil spring mount. Now you can see I ran these bolts through the lower control arms uh, in the front of the car towards the front of the engine. They articulate really well um, and I basically just ran those new bolts and hardware in, got them bolted to the frame so that we can start to get these coilovers uh, in place and mounted. So what I'm pointing out here is these coilovers have two different types of aluminum bushings that can go to them, in my case, two different sizes. And what you're going to want to be sure is that you match up the size and that they go in the correct location. Now, I suspect different applications are going to have a different uh, setup here, maybe the same size, maybe different. But just note that there are differences in these and make sure that you get the bottom uh, bushings the correct ones for the bottom and the top bushings the correct ones for the top basically you put those bushings in the coil over and you start to mount it in and they go directly up against the plates that I just put in uh, they have new hardware there with a bolt that you just thread it through super nice super easy the cool thing about this hardware that Ride Tech sends in this kit is it it all has these nylock nuts on it, which is really cool. It's a bit difficult because as soon as you get to the nylock part on, on the actual bolt itself, you have to use two wrenches um, or a socket and a wrench to get it, but it really gives good peace of mind that it's not going to come loose at some point while you're driving it. It kind of uh, eliminates the need to have lock washers on everything uh, like it would have had originally. So pretty cool setup. So I've got the top mocked up. You can see here uh, that there's still really good articulation with the coilover itself. Those spacers really articulate um, through the entire travel. Everything here is all set up to have really no bind or minimize the bind. Um, these R joints on the, on the back of these control arms. Again, these are going to get the same spacers. Slide that up into place. I've got all new hardware there, so it's just a matter of getting the holes lined up. Because I've got the car up on a lift and I've got a bridge jack, uh, it's pretty easy to manipulate and tweak the rear end into in to shape and size here just to make sure that these bolts drop in easily. Again, there's no adjustment on the lower control arms. The pinion angle and any adjustment you get is all taken up in the upper control arms that I'll show here in a bit. So just a matter of popping in the, the new hardware, the new bolts. Uh, and you can see the coilover is the last thing that I'll bolt up on each one of these sides um, once I get the, the rear bolt all the way through the frame, dial it in, and then again here you could see uh, same thing, make sure that you have the right aluminum spacers, pop one on either side, it really make sure that there's no bind in the suspension at all, uh, really easy to get. Anyone who's got a, a, a four post lift, uh, I definitely recommend looking into a bridge jack, which you could see there behind me, um, because in a minute here, as I get those lifted into place, I'm going to need to lift the body just to get the hole to line up perfectly. And, and having that bridge jack, a couple of cranks on it, makes that hole line up. It makes that rear end uh, distance spread out from the body there. Uh, you can see a couple of cranks here, and I'm lifting the body up with the rear end in place, and it lets that shock drop right into place so that I can uh, line the hole up pretty easy. Again, all new hardware for this, just a matter of uh, pushing the bolt through and throwing your washer on and throwing your nylock nut on and uh, tightening things down. Again, uh, you can take the time to torque stuff down to spec right now. I do that off camera, but uh, basically getting everything dialed in and then I'll torque it down here in just a little bit. Once this side is done, time to move over to the other side.
Okay, once the lower trailing arms are bolted into place and the coilovers are done, time to move to those upper control arms. Uh, kind of hard to see. The two bars came in my kit because mine was an original four-link kit, and it's basically literally getting the lengths correct and then throwing your bolts through. These From this kit from RideTech, they both have adjustment. This is how you're going to be able to, to shorten or lengthen based on what you need from a driveline angle. Pop those bolts in and you're ready to go. All right, the next part of this install is the pan hard bar. Now what that does is that controls side to side movement, uh, lateral movement in the rear end. And what you do here on this one, they obviously provide a bar with the kit. You take out the original stud that you see here, take this one off, bolt their new one on, and then connect the bar on both ends. Again, this has R joints on both sides of it. So it's gonna be putting the new stud on, putting the bushings in, and then securing it on both sides. Um, I have the car at ride height right now. That's the thing is you want to have it at ride height uh, with the weight on the wheels so that you can get the rear end centered and then adjust the bar length as necessary at ride height so that uh, as you set the car down, it doesn't uh, pull to one side or the other. So as I'm getting this old pan hard rod stud off, uh, it comes off pretty easily. Yours, if this is corroded, might need some heat and might need some persuasion, but nice to put a brand new stud on there. Uh, again, all brand new hardware. I think this is stainless, so I shouldn't have any issues with corrosion or rust coming through in the future. Again, they provide a nylock nut here, which is pretty nice. Uh, get it tightened up, torqued down, and uh, ready to put the bar on. Again, this pan hard rod comes with those R joints, slides on the stud perfectly, uh, no issues, all new hardware, pretty straightforward. If you could remove the old one, you basically have the skills required to install the new one. Again, I get everything torqued down off, off screen here after the fact, but uh, I'm getting everything cinched down right now uh, just to lock it into place. Again, you can see the adjustment on this side of the pan hard rod, the, the side that actually connects to the frame. You throw those aluminum spacers in, adjust the length of this so that you have the body centered. When I measured, I basically looked at my tire clearance on each side and centered the body on the frame and then made the correct adjustment on that pan hard rod. You can extend it, you can retract it, get it so that the holes line up and the body is centered and then throw your bolt through and, and get everything cinched down. All right, moving to the front of the car. We're moving quickly here. We've got the upper control arms. These mount in the original location, so it's just a matter of disassembly of everything that you've got there before. Since I've already done that, it's straight into putting these upper control arms in place. These ones already have ball joints. They already have additional caster built in, so we're going to get an enhanced uh, ride quality because the geometry is already corrected for, for a modern vehicle like this. Um, and they just bolt in place just like the other ones where they came off of. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I think I'm using the original hardware. These ones don't actually come uh, with uh, with new hardware and new bolts for it, so I'm using the original ones. These have special copper-colored nuts on the back, and they're fine thread, so um, using the original ones here uh, is, is good to go. And once I get that torque down, I'm, you're going to see me add the rest of the components here in the front, which is the lower control arm. Uh, one of the things with the lower control arms on this kit, as I mentioned before, it has the strut rod integrated. And so you have to drill out your strut rod where the original strut rod, rod went. You have to drill out the holes into a larger size so that you could put the aluminum spacer in place. Uh, but again, that's all pretty straightforward. I used the aluminum spacer uh, to, to mock up where the holes needed to go, and I used a, a step drill bit just to, to kind of hog those holes out. I did the same on both sides. And again, that's the next step. It's super straightforward uh, to, to get that. So you can see me doing that here. I'm hogging those holes out, uh, putting that spacer in place, uh, aluminum spacer, and that's what holds the uh, strut rod, um, which is part of the lower control arm. You can also see here that I've got the uh, sway bar in place uh, because you want to do that before you get the, the spindle and any of the brakes and wheels and stuff on. So 
It makes it a lot easier. There you can see the strut rod going through that hole, the lower control arm, and I've got the shock mounted up. Uh, again, it's, it's all simple reassembly stuff. It goes back on just like the other one came off with the benefit of not having to use a spring compressor because uh, it's a coilover. So there you go, super straightforward. <laughs> instructions with everything this car literally rides better than it's ever ridden and I've had just about every other suspension brand on it at one point and I can say without a doubt this handling is incredible it stays super flat in the corners it dives in where it needs to it steers around just great um, with all the other mods including the brakes that I've recently done the car does everything what I've asked, asked for it uh, from a handling perspective it's fantastic and the icing on the cake on this car is the TKX five-speed transmission. I've got a full video on that that shows the, why we did it, how we did it, and everything that we did that you would want to know about a TKX install. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys in the next video.